So far when we've been considering momentum, we've been considering systems where the mass doesn't change. But this isn't always the case. A nice example is a rocket. So imagine the rocket on the launch pad. Quite a lot of the mass of the rocket is made up as its fuel. Now when the rocket takes off, there aren't really external forces acting on the rocket. Well, there's gravity which it has to overcome, but that's very small compared to the internal forces from expelling the fuel. So as the rocket launches, the rocket gains an outwards momentum because the fuel it has a downwards momentum. So overall, the total momentum of that rocket fuel system isn't changing, it's still zero, but the rocket itself is gaining momentum because it's expelling the fuel. So let's have a look at how we can calculate the acceleration of the rocket as it expels the fuel. Okay, so let's consider our rocket. Let's draw our rocket here. This is the initial rocket. It's got mass m and it's traveling in this direction with some speed v. Now, time t later. Here is our rocket. Again, now it's sped up a little bit. Its speed is now v plus dv. But in order to speed up, it's had to lose some of its mass. So its mass is now m minus dm. But that mass hasn't just disappeared into thin air. We've got fuel going back this way with speed u, and it's got mass dm. So that's where the missing mass has gone to. Now, the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And when we say that, we're talking about this system and this system. So we're including the fuel in this final momentum. Okay, so we can write mv is equal to, now we've got the fuel, the fuel is going in the opposite direction, so the negative direction. So the momentum of the fuel is equal to minus dm u, and the rocket also has momentum going forwards, so the mass of the rocket is m minus dm, and the speed of the rocket is v plus dv. So this is the final momentum of the rocket fuel system. Now, this we can simplify a bit if we consider the relative, the velocity of the rocket relative to the fuel. So we've looked at relative velocities before. We've seen that the velocity of A relative to B was equal to the velocity of A minus the velocity of B. And in this case, we're looking at the velocity of the rocket relative to the fuel. So this will be the velocity of the rocket, which is now V plus dV minus the velocity of the fuel. And the velocity of the fuel is minus u. The minus because it's going in the opposite direction. So this is equal to v plus dv plus u. So that gives us the velocity of the rocket relative to the fuel. So we'll just rearrange this and we'll say, well, the velocity of the fuel is equal to the velocity of the rocket relative to the fuel minus v minus dv. And now that we've rearranged that, we're going to substitute this back up into this expression here. So we have mv is equal to minus dm. Now that's times u, so minus dm times v rel plus dm times v plus dm dv. So that is this term here. And then we've still got the remaining terms. So as we write these down, these terms here, we're going to expand the brackets. So we've got plus mv plus mdv minus dmv 
minus dm dv. Now we have so many terms and it's so messy, but a lot of these will cancel out. So let's cancel them out in yellow so we can still kind of see them. So we've got dm dv with a negative and here it is with a positive, so that disappears. Here's mv on the left-hand side and here it is again on the right-hand side. Now we've got a dmv here and a minus dmv here. So at the end of all that cancellation, we're left with this term and this term. So let's rearrange that. And we have dmv rel is equal to m dv, where this thing here is the mass lost from rocket. And this thing here is the mass of the rocket. Now we can actually make this into a nice rocket equation if we divide through by dt. So let's divide through by dt. We've got dm dt v rel is equal to m dv dt. And why this is a nice rocket equation is, well, we know that dv dt, that is the acceleration dm dt, that's the mass lost from the rocket. So we can actually give that a symbol r, which is the rate at which it's losing mass. So we've got r times the relative velocity between the rocket and the fuel is equal to ma. So this is our rocket equation. And it tells us about how quickly a rocket accelerates. Now, the other thing we might care about for our rocket is, well, how fast is it actually going? So if at time t initial, the rocket has mass m initial and it has speed v initial, then at time t final, the rocket has mass m final and the rocket has speed v final. Well, what is the change in velocity? To do that, we can once again use this equation here. It's just we need to make both terms on this equation, both the, the terms on the other side, be talking about the same thing so that we can integrate. Now, at the moment, this is the mass lost from the rocket. And on the right hand side, we've got the mass of the rocket. So if we want to do the change of mass of the rocket, instead of considering this, we're going to consider this part, then that mass is actually lost. So we should write this as dm v rel is equal to m dv. And in this case, this dm, this is the change in mass of the rocket itself. Okay, so what we want to do is just integrate this and we've got here our limits for our integral. So let's rearrange and then integrate. So I'll just scroll up to get some more room. Sorry, picture. Okay, so we have minus dm on m times v rel is equal to dv. And now we're integrating. And we've said that when we have speed v initial, the mass of the rocket is m initial. When we have speed v final, the mass of the rocket is mass m final. And so solving this, when we integrate a one on x function, we end up with a log x. So this is equal to minus v rel, because that's a constant, times log m from m initial to m final is equal to this thing, which is just v from v initial to v final. So this is equal to minus v rel log m final minus log m initial is equal to v final minus v initial. And so let's get rid of this negative sign by putting a negative there and a positive there. Now, when we do log m initial minus log m final, we can write that as a fraction. So inside the logarithm. So we've got v final minus v initial is equal to v rel times log m initial over m final. And so that'll tell us by how much our rocket has sped up. So let's have a look at the problem now. Rocket thrust is given by r times v relative. 
A rocket with an initial mass of Mi is equal to 850 kilograms consumes fuel at a rate R equals 2.3 kilograms per second. The speed of the exhaust relative to the rocket engine is 2,800 meters per second. A. What thrust does the engine provide? B. What is the initial acceleration of the rocket? Okay, so part A is pretty easy because we're told that thrust is given by R times V relative. And we're given R is 2.3 and this number here is V relative. So that's 2,800. So substituting that into the calculator, we get 6,440 newtons and we should just give it to two significant figures. So that's 6,400 newtons. Okay, now part B, what is the initial acceleration of the rocket? Okay, we just derived an equation for the acceleration of the rocket. We derived the equation that R times V rel, that's the thrust that we've just calculated up here, is equal to MA, which makes a lot of sense because that's just Newton's second law, which is telling us that the force acting on the rocket accelerates the rocket. So we have that the acceleration is equal to the thrust, which is 6,440 over the mass of the rocket and the rocket has a mass of 850 kilograms. So putting that into the calculator, we end up with 7.6 meters per second per second. Okay, so this is all well and good if the rocket is already in space and it exhausts its fuel in this manner. In this case, it would accelerate at this rate. If the rocket was sitting on the launch pad waiting to be launched and it was expelling fuel at this rate, then this acceleration will not overcome the acceleration due to gravity. So the rocket would just sit on the launch pad, slowly burning f through its fuel. I guess at some point, this mass will have decreased enough that if it continues burning it at the same rate, then it will manage to take off. But Initially, this isn't enough to launch it off a launch pad on Earth.